All right, good day, everybody. How's it going? My name is Jemai Miller with Miller Lifestyle Fitness, and today what I'm going to be showing you guys is how to build a more powerful and stronger deadlift, increase your strength in the back, and all those muscles that are incorporated in competing at deadlift, like your shoulders, your back, your traps, glutes, quads, hamstrings, and calves. So first we're going to start off with deficit deadlifts. As you guys can see, this is what I'm doing right now. What deficit deadlifts do is it helps you to get the bar off the ground so that power net explosion to lift that bar off the ground. Deficit deadlifts are completely probably the most, um, I would say, beneficial um, movement to work on getting that ball off the ground. Then I moved on to back pulls. What back pulls do is help you get through that sticking point. It usually starts from about a little below the knee, or right, right at the knees or below the knee. That sticking point at the top of the movement to help you lock out, lock the bar out. As you can see, I couldn't find a uh, safety rack to get the rack lower. That's the lowest I can go, but I worked with it on Lastly, I moved on to the conventional deadlift, but of course you can see I added resistance bands because I, as stated before in my older videos, I love to use resistance bands. It gives you tension throughout the whole movement. It helps you to control on that um, eccentric that negative going down and that negative is what really helps you build strength as well so I added the resistance bands to fully exhaust that movement on the con concentric which is that explosive movement going up locking it out contracting that muscle and then on the eccentric going down control at times you would see that I was just pretty much exhausted and I just dropped down but for the most part, it gives you that that control, that strength to um, complete those movements. And I really think resistance bands help with hypertrophy, which is um, muscle growth later on in the long run for those last and final reps. All right, guys. So as you can see, that was my first round of uh, deadlifts or the three sets of deadlifts. Once again, we're doing. Deficits, drag pulls, and the conventional. This is my second set. Move on to 135. I'm trying to keep my form butt down, back straight, chest up, head straight. Always try to keep your form proper to avoid injury. to the rack pulls as you can see right here like I said before I would have loved to gone lower than right at my knees but that's the lowest I could have gotten the bar or I could have manipulated the bar but what you want to do is try to get it right below your knees and pull from there and just lock out Lastly, the conventional deadlift with the resistance bands. Now, there's a few ways you can do this. Well, a lot of people, what I, as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm using it as a training tool just to show you guys. So I'm doing it as a circuit. So for the way that I'm doing it, I'm going to be, of course, keep my heart rate up. I'm going to burn fat with the rep range that I'm doing. Of course, I'm going to end up, you know, inducing hypertrophy and eventually, you know, I'm going to grow muscle, lean muscle. But what you can also do is progressive cycling. So for about, let's just say, three weeks or four weeks, you can focus on just de deficit deadlifts only. So you can do deficit deadlifts for about two, three weeks and try to build up every week, try to do more and more and more. And then let's just say the following three weeks, you could focus on your rack pull, focus on that lockout. And then later on, you can go ahead and use the resistance bands 
you know, on that week six, seven, eight, or seven, eight, and nine. I'm sorry, seven, eight, and nine. Use those resistance bands to really focus on the the entire movement going up, locking it out, and going down, getting that full explosion. And all that does, that progressive cycling does, is helps you to basically focus on each portion of that movement of the deadlift the movement of that deadlift it also helps you to manage and see the progress that you're making so when you decide to do a meet let's just say at the end of those 12 weeks you decide to do a meet and you're doing your deadlifts you'll see on week nine when you finally decide to just do deadlifts only how or the progress you have made in getting that bar off the ground that explosion and locking it out which is very important so like I said I decided to use it for as a circuit to burn fat and this was the second my second workout I warmed up as usual like I told you guys I did my abs, I did my pull-ups, did my dips, and then I did a few lat pull-downs to really stretch my lats out, stretch my back out completely, and then I move on to deadlifts. After that, I went on to my full and complete back workout. And once again, it all depends on how you want to approach your training stuff. Right here, I think I want to say this is my third set. I want to say, yeah, third set, 185. As you can see, you know, it's really getting to me. I'm fully exhausted by now. 185 is, is nothing to me on deadlifts. But doing this circuit along with the resistance bands is really taxing. said I did about eight somewhere between eight to ten reps I said before when you get really exhausted you uh, sometimes completely forget to count your reps so I was good to have that training partner with you to push you and get you that extra rep that you need and here we are with my last final working set at 225 on deficit deads once again, keeping that form right. Trying my hardest to control it going down, but what really matters is getting that bar off the ground. Notice how low the bar is on the ground and how close I try to keep the bar to my own feet on my shin. Keep my form proper at all times. to rack pulls at 225 as well like I said before my back is fully exhausted I really don't know how I completed the rest of my back workout honestly and like I said before guys on rack pulls you want to try to get that bar a little bit below your knees just a little bit below your knees usually that's where that sticking point is I kind of say I cheated on this but I work with equipment that I have in my location. Last but not least, the conventional deadlift with the resistance bands. You don't have to use the resistance bands. You can just do the, the straight deadlift. You don't have to do them. You can approach this in a circuit style, but you can extend your brakes. That way, you're still working all the, the portions of that deadlift getting that rest period to rebuild your ADP and ATP levels and then hitting that workout so you can do it the way I'm doing it but just do a longer rest period that longer rest period helps your muscles to recover in order to help you to build arm um, strength and build muscle so you can do it you can take this approach and do a longer rest period you can do the um this approach and, and do the 
more so, I guess you could say, circuit style training. Or you can do the periodization of pro or progressive cycling where you work on a specific part of that deadlift each week. It's just a video that I wanted to bring to you guys, something that I, I never really did for my deadlifts. And I really thought it was a good idea. I really thought it was something that would really help a lot of people on their deadlifts and on just basically building a great um, massive back in general so but once again guys you can look me up on instagram jemai miller on facebook at jemai miller my facebook training page is miller lifestyle fitness and email is miller lifestyle fitness at gmail.com personal training so you could I can do online training personal training training advice nutritional advice I hope you guys enjoy thank you and take care